Hello, 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 and welcome back to another video at Take Refuge 3D with your host, Peter. Uh, and this is another plasticity tutorial, um, but we will involve a little bit of Blender and Substance Painter, although this workflow will apply to other 3D softwares as well. This is just to show you my workflow for this particular task. Now, um, I had a question in the comments on one of my videos uh, from somebody, somebody uh, who was named Okami Champlu, might I add. And anyway, they mentioned in the comments on one of my videos that a lot of plasticity tutorials skip over the workflow of getting an object out of plasticity and getting it game ready for a game engine. And a lot of people think plasticity is a CAD software and that's just for industrial design and 3D printing. And they might be right in a lot of ways, but the hard surface workflow in uh, plasticity is very, very efficient compared to uh, using a polygon modeler. So although there is still some cleanup that you need to do, once you get your model into a uh, polygon software to get it ready, it's just as much cleanup as you would do on a uh, Boolean uh, poly modeling workflow. So um, you're wrong if you think that plasticity is just a CAD software and just for 3D printing and industrial design and product design. Um, it's 100% uh, for game assets, and game assets is what I like to make uh, for the most part. So um, we'll get into it. I'm going to show you a, a workflow. Uh, it's a little bit quick and dirty, but it yields pretty good results. And I would use this workflow for um, background assets, but you could also upscale this workflow. Um, and if you pay a little bit more attention to what you're doing, uh, you can 100% get uh, great results. You just uh, probably need to do a bit more work on your UVs. But this, uh, as you can see on your screen here, I've got this object that I made. It's a simple object and it'd be quite high poly because of all of these details here. So we want to get some of these baked into geometry and some of them baked into normals. So let's get into the tutorial. So I have actually made a lower poly version of this. So when you're preparing to make a game object for a game asset, you can go and you can make the object as um, detailed as you like, and then you can do the cleanup later. Um, but if you go and knowing what you're going to make, it's much easier to make a base mesh and then add your details. Um, so you don't have to do as much cleanup. Now, what we've got on the screen here is a basic model. I haven't added any fillets. There's actually just one bevel on the bottom, which is part of the overall geometric shape. And then I've got these uh, insets here, which are part of the geometric shape. Um, I don't know. This is like some kind of barrel. Uh, it's, it's nothing much. And then I've also made a high poly version, which you can see here, which has got all the fillets and the details. So uh, once we've got our low poly, what we can do is we can go and export that um, as an OBJ. I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it tutorial. Um, and we want to go down to save as type OBJ and I'm going to call this low and we're going to ex no, that's the high one. So we want to hide the high one. Look at the low one, select it and number four on the keypad object mode to select uh, export save as obj uh, and tutorial okay and we're going to go um low for this one okay and then we're just going to look at this uh model we've got tries here um i actually don't think this is very good for the tries and i'm gonna do the tries myself so I'm just going to export this as n-gons and you can obviously see there still are some tries when you do n-gons and I'm actually just going to bring the detail down on this to about 0.25 okay and if we press um, enter on that 
you'll see that our details comes down here. Now, there's a few places where there's a lot of detail um, up here, but we'll actually deal with uh, these uh, in our poly software, okay? So what's next? We can even maybe try O point. I don't want to bring it down to O point. O point two, two five, like even less. Okay, so we we're getting that as low as we we kind of can without losing the overall form. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Okay, that one's exported. I'm going to hide that one, and I'm going to do the same again for the high one. Uh, export save as OBJ, and we've got a low one there. Um, and I'm going to call this one high. Okay, this is our high poly one. Okay, save as. And I'm going to do the opposite of what I did there. And I'm going to keep it as ngons, but I'm going to bring it up to one. I think, I don't know if we, I don't even know if we can bring it above one. I might even try that, 1.2. Okay. I think it lets us only go as high as one. So that is 100% uh, there. So here we've got all of our curves and our details and everything like that. And I'm just going to click OK on that. So we've got our low and our high. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Blender. Okay, and we've got our default scene here. Um, and I'm going to, uh, I've got my import, that file import uh, OBJ, this one here. And I think I've got this new folder tutorial. Okay. I'm going to import the low object, okay? And as you can see, it's come in um, at a funny angle. That's because Plasticity and Blender use different uh, uh, Z direction, a different orientation, um, or a different Y direction rather. So it's on its angle. It doesn't really matter, but I am gonna bring it to stand upright. So I'm gonna press rotate R, you, I've got screencast on here, so that's fine. So alpha rotate z, uh, x minus 90. Oh, wait, rotate x minus 90. Yep, there we go. And that's been brought in. Now, uh, we will bring the high poly in in a moment. But what we want to do now is we will actually want to go and deal to, I'm just going to delete these uh, reference objects. We want to deal to our... Um, fact that we've got ngons because within a game engine game engines read triangles so if you bring ngons into a game engine it's going to auto convert them okay and if you bring ngons into a texturing software it's going to auto convert them and the algorithm that auto converts for the texturing software and for the uh, game engine may be different so it might look cool in the texturing software and cool when you bring it back into Blender. Uh, but then when you bring it into a game engine, it might have a whole bunch of shading errors. So what we really want to do is get rid of that um, from the beginning. And there's a really simple way. We'll go into um, wireframe mode and select our object. And you can see we've pretty much got what um, we uh, had in plasticity. Now I'm going to add a triangulate modifier, okay? And we'll leave it on beauty and um, we will leave it like that. And one thing that we want to do is uh, keep the normals, which you can do. Uh, but for whatever reason, um, it, that doesn't really work when I want to decimate it, okay? So... Uh, I'm going to leave it as it is here, okay? And I'm actually going to uh, duplicate this, okay? And I'm going to press escape so the duplicate object goes back to the exact same spot that the other one is. And I've now I've got low and low one. Low one, I'm just going to double click or press F2 to rename this. And I'm going to call this one data. Oh, or data. Okay. Um, and we've got data and we've got low. I'm going to get rid of the uh, triangulate modifier on the data uh, object. And I'm going to actually hide the data object. And we're going to go back to our low object. 
and we are going to add a data transfer modifier under the modify list here at the very top. Okay, we're going to use our eyedropper and we're going to drag it over to our uh, scene collection and we're going to choose uh, object data as the source object. We're going to leave this on replace. We're going to leave the mix factor on one. We're going to activate face corner data and we're going to click custom normals. And you will see that that brings that all the way back. Okay. So now what we've got is the triangulated mesh uh, without the uh, shading errors that you get when you triangulate it after importing. So we're uh, basically what we're doing is we are taking the original Ngon mesh and all of its face normals. Okay. And we are going to um, apply that uh, data to the normals of the uh, low poly triangulated mesh and that just re-establishes uh, like the curvature of the surface. Now if you have any trouble with this uh, modifier don't play around with it too much but I think we're on nearest corner and best matching normal. You can also tr um, choose nearest corner and best matching face normal um, and then if you change it to the other ones you'll notice that it totally gets uh, messed up. So uh, I think one of these two works fine. Now what we want to do is we want to add a decimate modifier because as you can see we've got down here we've got 2012 vertices. Now that's quite high poly and not everybody's going to be using uh, Nanite and Unreal 5 because not everybody's making games for um, you know, uh, you know, high-end PCs and the PS5. Some people are making games uh, for the Nintendo Switch, like the fantastic Tears of the Kingdom, which is just, how the hell did they make that game? It is uh, absolutely a technical masterpiece. And if you think AI is coming to take your jobs, I think that's just a really, really good example of a game that uh, it just shows what uh, hard work, dedication, and a lot of money and uh, knowledge uh, it takes to make a really good game. Anyway, uh, that's over. We're going to add our decimate modifier. Okay, and we're going to bring this up to the middle. Okay, and we're going to bring it down to, well, what we'll do is we'll just drag it across. Okay, and we'll find somewhere with a funny curve like maybe this area here, okay, and we'll just drag this across until we start to see uh, some uh, shading errors, and then we'll just drag it a little bit back. So we're there on 0 0.5 exactly, and we're just going to bring it all the way around, um, and we're on 1,007 faces. We're going to click triangulate on the decimate modifier as well. And that didn't do anything to the amount of uh, faces uh, or the verts. Uh, so that's all good. Let's see if we can bring it even a little bit lower. There. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, less than a thousand faces. And I do not see any shading problems. So all good there. Now... Um, that is basically our FBX. So I'm going to go and export. By the way, this is pressing Q. This is my quick favorites. It's got quite a lot of things in there, but uh, I use them all pretty much. So we're going to export as an FBX. I'm going to go back to my uh, tutorial folder, and I'm just going to call this barrel underscore, who else, underscore low. Um, and I'm going to choose selected objects only. Okay, and we've got to make sure uh, apply modifiers is on because to keep this as a, um, what's the word, uh, non-destructive workflow, we want to keep our modifiers uh, not applied. So if we have to come back and make amendments uh, later, we can. So I'm just going to export that. And then we're going to go back to plasticity and... In plasticity, we're going to export. Oh no, we've already exported our high poly. So back in Blender, we're going to import our, we'll hide our low one now that we've um, exported it. Um, I'm going to go import 
uh, OBJ and the high one this time. And we're going to rotate X minus 90. And we're just going to straight on export that as an FBX. Okay, and we're going to call that barrel high. Barrel high, high barrel um, FBX. Okay, and that will have saved my original settings. Okay, so one thing I forgot to do actually is we're going to go back to our low poly and we're going to have to export this again. I want to UV map this. So as you can see, as soon as we go into edit mode, we can see it's true nature, but we've hidden that true nature with uh, some uh, transferring of data. We've covered it in makeup and made it look pretty. Um, I'm going to U and I'm just going to smart UV project this. Now, uh, depending on your object, you're probably going to want to do a manual unwrap or you're going to want to do a... Um, you you want to either going to do a manual unwrap or you can do a smart uv unwrap some objects a cube unwrap will be fine but i'm going to do a smart uv project on this one okay i'm just going to leave the default settings um and do the island margin 0 0.003 uh, actually i'll leave it as is it won't matter and then um we'll go into our uv editing um and I'm going to pack this so you can actually just manually, uh, you know, pack things. Um, but I'm going to use UV Pack Master for the this is a paid add on. Uh, it's great for uh, packing UVs and doing a couple of other things. Um, I'm going to click that and I'm just going to click that and we'll see how it goes. We'll give it a couple of moments to do its uh, its maths. And then we'll, what I find to do is go out and just do it one more time. And it's taking up about 80% of the UV space now, so that's more than enough. Um, so like I said before, uh, it might not be always uh, the best way to UV. In this case, it's just such a simple object that that's fine. Um, uh, there, there, there could be other, you might want to not even do that, depending on whether you're doing an environment or an object, depending on whether you want normal maps or not. Um, it's all going to uh, change depending on that so now we're just one more time we're just going to export that one fbx and then we're going to choose barrel low and just uh, cover that one up so then we're going to go into substance painter um, and um, where are we substance painter so we're going to start a new um, one, I'm going to use UD, uh, Unity HD Render Pipeline Template, uh, Metallic Standard, because that's what I use. Um, and well, that's what I'm using at the moment. And we're going to Tutorial. Uh, we'll choose uh, Barrel Low. And if all has gone well, if we've done everything correctly, we should get a, uh, a decimated uh, object in here with no shading artifact. Okay, so let's see what comes up. Wonderful. I can't see any of the triangulation there. And we'll quickly look. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, so that's what we've got there. Now we're gonna bake our mesh maps, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, first and foremost, Hang on, I'll just go out of here. I just want to check. Uh, yep, the UVs look fine there. So we'll go back into baking mode over here. Okay, and I'm going to choose my high uh, barrel uh, FBX. Okay, and what we want to do is the, I must say that I used to use Marmoset uh, pretty much exclusively for baking normals because it had the cage. Um, now that Substance has got the cage, I do find myself using it less often and just more for renders because this is working quite well. So anywhere where you can see the red, so you can see the pink lines of the cage and the red uh, areas are going to be shading artifacts where the high poly is intersecting with the low poly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull the frontal distance out. Okay. And... I think that should do it. I don't really want to mess around with too many. Um, but 
think this is fine. Uh, I'm going to turn on, I'm going to take this from 512 to 2048, and I'm going to turn on anti-aliasing to 16. I'm going to turn off the ID map because we don't have an ID map, and we're just going to give this a go. Now, I am aware there m might be some problems with this due to the shape, but I just want to see if I can... This, just for the sake of this tutorial, this is going to be fine. I mean, you can you can mess with this uh, until 3 o'clock in the morning, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to bake some selected textures at my... Uh, and you can see the normals coming out already from the high poly mesh. So let's return to painting mode. And then we have it. Um, I was aware that there was going to be some shading errors. Now, you can go and mess with your... Actually, it didn't come out too bad on the bottom. Like, I th oh, yeah, there's one there. One or two there, but that's not to worry. It's something that you can mess with uh, or bake your normals elsewhere and then bring them in. Um, overall, if I look at that from a distance, there are a few errors, but... Overall, it looks good. Like, this could be a great barrel in the background. So let's just whack a smart material on there. Um, like, let's find a plasticky barrel, kind of. I like this plastic used. Uh, let's change the color to a blue barrel. So it's uh, a blue barrel. Okay. Cool. And then we can just go up the top here. We can add a fill layer and a mask. Dust plastic. Whack that on there. Uh, let's go into the mask editor and global balance, make it a bit more dusty, make it a bit more of a dirty color. I don't know, something like that. And maybe just below that we can add a, um, uh, some, some cavity grime. Cavity dirt. Let's have a look at cavity, dirt cavities, stylized cavity edges. Is that going to work? No, it's too strong, that one. Sand cavities. Perfect. And then we can make that like more of a darker color. Okay. Uh, the grimy color. Let's take that down a bit. And maybe give that a little bit of... Uh, less roughness like make it a bit slimy not metallic um, and give it a bit of height and then we got it like something that that would look perfectly okay in a uh, background object in a in a low poly uh, environment or you know a lower poly environment and you know if you got a high uh, budget for textures uh, you could turn up the detail and that kind of looks really cool. That's just that's an object that you can put in your game. Uh, there is a couple of shading errors on this. I did make it very quickly for this tutorial. So put more effort in and you'll get a better object. Um, so to answer the question uh, from uh, Okami Champloo, uh, yes, the, the answer is there is a workflow, uh, several workflows in fact, including the one I just showed you. To make game assets with plasticity it takes a little bit of extra work to get it into a game um, object but i can bring this into uh, unity for example um, and that would be uh, perfectly okay so maybe i'll actually just show you that or maybe i'll show you uh, this object in plasticity uh, in in unity Okay, so I'm back and I just went and uh, set up a uh, little, uh, I've got a sort of a, a demo scene that I, I use to debug things and stuff uh, in Unity. So uh, we'll go over to that and uh, I've set it up uh, with a material and uh, this is this little Peaky Blinders character walking around. Um, just up the scale of that. Okay. And we've got our object that we made in plasticity a few minutes ago uh, and texture and everything and it is in the game engine so 
100 and it's got some physics on it now uh, we can excuse the frame rate uh my old 2070 um is probably not handling uh having all of these softwares open but there you go game object in unity okie dokie so I'm just going to close Unity to um, uh, uh, get rid of, get some more resources back. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, please. Uh, the numbers are growing and I've got a few different little tutorials planned and uh, I hope that um, I can provide some of the knowledge that I've scrabbled together over the last few years and, and hand it over and pass it down um, because I learned all of my stuff um, so uh, from tutorials like this online um, so quick recap okay so we started by making a very simple model okay with uh, uh, no fillets and um, just very basic details we added fillets and higher details to the model, okay? Then we took it into um, Blender, okay? And we uh, made a, uh, low, a low poly export from plasticity and we triangulated it, okay? It had 2,000 faces, okay? We added a data transfer with a duplicate of the low poly to get the normals back. And then we decimated it and triangulated it again. And we came down to 985 verts. Okay, so uh, that's a very good uh, amount of verts for a game object. And then we took it into Substance Painter and we whacked on uh, basically. Uh, a, a, a three materials to give it some detail but you could spend a lot more time on an asset this is just for the purpose of showing you and then we took it into unity which i showed you so that's the process or a quick and dirty process for getting a game asset from plastic from plasticity uh optimizing it for a game engine and then uh, preparing it uh, materials and putting it in the game engine. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Ciao.